over the last year, we have seen significant changes on how we approach stroke care. Now we have quite a few studies that show that patients who have an acute ischemic stroke might benefit from interventional therapies out to 24 hours before it was restricted to six hours. Now, this is the intervention where a proceduralist goes through the groin all the way up to the brain and removes a clot that's lodged there, causing a, a blood flow to be impaired to that area. So, so blood cannot get to that area of the brain. And that procedure now, we know that there's people that can uh, sustain their brain without having irreversible injury out to 24 hours. Before, we thought that was impossible. So that has been a great change. As a result of these changes, what we have seen is that now more patients are being triaged to the Comprehensive Stroke Center, like the one we have here at Baptist Hospital of Miami. So to see if this patient will be a candidate for this therapy out to 24 hours. So this results in more stroke alerts happening, but also EMS and paramedics bring more patients to Comprehensive Stroke Centers, which are the centers that are capable and have the technology and resources to deliver this therapy. Ultimately though, stroke presents the same way in men and women. Usually we teach this with a FAST and it's an acronym. F goes for a unilateral face weakness, so you can have a droopy face. A is for arm weakness or it could be the leg as well. S is for speech changes, either the speech is slurred or there seems like there's some problem with language the person cannot understand or speak appropriately. And then T is for time, because time is very important for the interventions that we can do to prevent damage from a stroke. Stroke is a largely preventable disease. About 80% of stroke is preventable. There are some things you cannot do much about. One of them is aging, for example, and some of them might be genes. But for the majority, the bulk, you can really prevent stroke. Now, stroke is a very common disorder. We know that one out of six people are gonna get them throughout their life. Actually, one in five women are gonna get them throughout their life. It's the second leading cause of death in the world, fifth in the United States, and it's a leading cause of disability. So things that you can do, for example, include decreasing your alcohol intake, making sure that you check your blood pressure and that you don't have high blood, high, hypertension, and if you do, that you do things to lower that, making sure you don't have diabetes, following a healthy diet, losing weight, doing exercise, lowering cholesterol if you have it high, and those sorts of things are going to lower your risk of having a stroke 10, 20, 30 years down the line.